Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Ross, and it's great to be back after a week off from Hurricane Ian. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to display online images and pages, whole web pages, in your Microsoft Access database using the web browser control. Today's question comes from Brenda in Anchorage, Alaska, one of my gold members. Brenda says, I loved your ASP upload seminar. I have all of the images for my various products stored in a folder on my server, just like you showed. They display perfectly on my website. Now, is there a way I can display those same images in my access database in the office? I've tried using the technique you show in your images video using the picture control, but that doesn't work. Okay, there's a lot to unpack with this question. Let me give you some background first. For those of you who aren't familiar with my other videos. So I've made a seminar a little while back ago that shows you how to connect your access database locally to SQL Server on a website. So that way you can have your customers, your products, all that stuff stored on the web, but you can access it from any location in multiple offices using your access database. You can also use that information to feed your website. So you can display all your customers, your products, whatever, on your website too. The problem is this seminar doesn't cover how to upload images. So if you want product images or customer pictures or any of that stuff, that's not covered. So I released this template, which shows you how to use ASP upload to upload pictures to your database, to your website, basically. You can take pictures from your local computer, upload them to your website, store that information in the database, what the picture name is and such, and then you can display that on your website. That's the same thing I do on my website, for example, if people wanna upload screenshots into my forums for their questions and such. Now, the problem with this is that you can't display that picture easily in your local access database. I've got a whole video that shows you how to display local images that are stored on your computer, or at least in your office network, and you can, you can display those just fine in your access database, but you can't use this technique to show pictures that are on the web. So in today's video, what I'm gonna show you how to do is take those pictures that are on a website, any website, and display those in your access database using the web browser control. Now you don't have to have had my Access SQL Server seminar or the ASP upload lessons. You don't need all that. If you have pictures on the web that you wanna show in your database, this technique will work just fine for you. But I wanted to give everyone the background first so you know what it is exactly I'm doing. I'm basically allowing Microsoft Access to show pictures that are on the web. That's it, okay? All right, so that, so that. But of course, if you are interested in more information on getting your Access database online, I'll put links to all those different seminars and templates and such down below so you can click on them and get more information. Now, before we get started today, I got a couple prerequisite videos for you to go watch. These are free videos. You should know how to make calculated query fields. You should know about string concatenation. That's putting two or more strings together. You're gonna need to know a little bit of VBA, some VBA programming. If you've never programmed before, don't worry, it's not scary. Go watch this video first, about 20 minutes long. It teaches you everything you need to know to get started with VBA. It's free. And you should know how to use the if function, the if function, immediate if, right? It's putting in an if then statement in a function basically. So go watch those videos. If you haven't seen any of those before, if you don't know what these things are, go watch that, come on back. I'll wait for you. Go on, get out of here. Okay, so here I am in my tech help free template. This is a free database. You can download a copy off my website if you want to. And instead of products, let's say I wanna put customer pictures in my database and I've got all these customer pictures stored on my website in an images folder. But you can use product pictures, you can do pictures of cars, starships, ah, whatever you wanna do, I don't care. Whatever pictures you wanna display, you can display in your database. And this technique that I'm going to show you also works with some different file types. You can show web pages, HTML files. You can show text files if you want to. Now, some types of files like PDF files will try to download if you use this technique. So when you 
when you go to visit it, the browser is going to try to download that PDF file, which isn't usually what you want. So this is pretty much for simple web pages or pictures. I use it for pictures a lot. And yes, it'll even work with animated GIF files. That's pretty cool. So the first thing we have to do is we have to add the file name to the customer table or whatever table you're using. The products, product table, obviously. So we'll put, come down here. And I'm going to put in here customer image like that. That'll be a short text field. Not just image, not just picture. Those are reserved words. You'll get in trouble with those. So we'll use customer image or product image or product picture or whatever you want. Now, if all of your images are in the same folder, which is what I do personally, I put them all in like, like my uploads, I have an upload images folder. For me, the website, I've got just an images folder. I dump them all in there. All right. If you want to have them in different folders, you can store the full path name to them. So it could be images, customers, customer1.jpg, whatever. But I'm just going to assume that all of my images are in the same folder. Okay. So all... I'm going to store in the customer image field is just the name of the file itself because they're all in the same folder. So let's save this table, close it down. Let's go to the customer form. I'll open this guy up in design view. Let's add that field in here. I'm just going to copy and paste country, copy, paste. That's control C, control V if you didn't know that. Let's change this to say uh, this. You can just have you know image here. That's fine. That's just your label. This will change to change the control source to customer image and then also change the name. Copy and pasted that. All right. Save it. Now, just for the purposes of class, I'm going to delete all of this stuff over here. We don't need it. I want some room to put my picture. Let's save this and let's put some file names in here for our images. So I've got some images already set up on my website i know what the file names are these were uploaded let's say by my employees and they put the customer profile pictures online or maybe the customers did themselves using your asp upload page they set up their own profile pictures whatever but if you're using an online database then this customer table would be connected to your database on the server right so that image would already be in there right that image file name so mine is for example richard.jpg Okay, and I'm going to change one thing I don't like about this and for this particular database is I don't like the cycle goes to the next record. So I'm going to go to other and say cycle is current record. That's one setting that I usually change. All right, but, but most people don't have databases like that. So I leave it for the, the, the beginner databases. All right, I like it. So when I'm done with the last field, it cycles back to the beginning. If I want to go to the next record, I do it myself. Okay. All right, so next up is Jimmy Kirk. So that's kirk.jpg. And just to show you where I'm getting these names from. All right, so here's my website, right? I've got a folder set up called images on my folder. And then in there, I've got richard.jpg. And there it is. You can display that directly on the web in other pages. Or we're going to use this URL and display that using the web browser control in our access database. All right, and I've got another one here is Kirk, right? Kirk.jpg, and there's that handsome double. Okay, okay. So that's where I'm getting those file names from, and we're gonna we're gonna tack on the the, the complete URL of that folder in just a minute using a query. All right, who else I got? I got Picard, of course. And just to show you that you can do some other file types, I've got uh, for Riker. Let's do junk.htm. That'll be an actual HTML file. And uh, let's do one more. I'll show you a spinny uh, animated GIF. I got a 599cd.gif logo. Oh, we can do text files, too, if you have any text files, like uh, test.txt text. And I'll show you what happens if you try to access a PDF file. If you do, like, uh, I got, like, my w9.pdf online. Okay. So I got the file names in here. Now let's make a query to tack on that URL in the beginning of it. Do you have to use a query? No, you could put this directly in the web browser control, but I like doing it in a query. That's just how I like to do it. So that's how we're going to do it. So I'm going to create query design. I'm going to bring in my customer table, close that guy. And we are going to bring down the star, bring down all the fields. And then right here, we're going to make a calculated query field. 
I'm going to use Shift F2 to zoom in so you can see this a little better. We're going to create a new field, a calculated query field called image location, image loc colon. And that's going to be set equal to, in quotes, HTTP or HTTPS in my case, colon slash slash 599cd.com, sl oh, can't type today, slash images, slash, close the quotes up, ampersand, and then it's going to be customer image. That actual image field is going to go there. So this will be 599c.com slash images slash richard.jpg, for example. Hit OK. There's your calculated field. All right, let's save that. I'm going to run it. Whoop, so I didn't save it. Let me give it a name. Customer Q for query. All right, run it. And let's slide to the right. And here we go. Whoops, what do we got? And there we go. That looks good. Now. Down here, okay, we're missing file names. So I want this to be just null, right, if this is null. So we can use our little if function, our if, right, our immediate if function. That's why I wanted you to learn that first. Go back to design mode. All right, come in here, shift F2, zoom in. I'm going to come right there, and I'm going to say if is null customer image comma we're going to make this null comma do that so this is read it like an if then statement right if customer image is null then set image loc equal to null otherwise it's not null set it equal to this whole thing that's how that reads right the what you're checking value if it's true value if it's false hit okay save it and let's run it again and slide to the right and you can see now that's null there too. Okay, because if you if you put in just the path to the folder, then it'll either display that that page if there is a page there, or it'll give you an error if there's nothing there. Okay, so we've got our field all set to go now. This is a calculated field, so it's not editable. If I try clicking right now, it says it can't be edited. That's fine. The rest of this still is. Make sure you can still edit these. Whenever you put calculated fields and queries, sometimes if your query gets too complicated. Can no longer edit the query so make sure you can still edit it all right let's put that field here on the form we're going to have to change where this form gets its data from its record source go to the data tab change this from customer t to customer q okay and then we're going to go over here and we're going to put a field over here i'm just going to copy this one copy paste i'm going to delete that label I'm going to slide this over here. You can either put it below it like I like to do, or you can put it above it if you want it to look like a URL bar. Whatever, I don't care. That's why you build your own database, so you can do whatever you want to do. Let's open this guy up. Let's change the control source to image location. Copy, paste, put that in the name. All right, close that. Now, this isn't editable. I don't want the user thinking they can edit, so let's make that light gray like that. To visually tells the user, hey, you can't change that. And now it's time for the grand finale. It's time to put the web browser control right here. Are you ready? Go to form design, drop this guy down. There's the web browser control right there. Now, this guy was added, I think, in Access 2016 or 2013, one of those versions. There is an older web browser control that this might work for. I think it will. It's been a long time since I've used it. Um, I know it's got some different VBA properties, but I think the control itself still works kind of the same way. So this will, you probably, if you got an older version of Access, you can probably get away with this. But I know it's at least in 2016. So this, this alone is a reason enough to upgrade. If you got one of those older versions sticking around, you won't be able to do this. All right, so drop this guy here. It's going to ask you to type in an address of where you want the hyperlink this thing to. Just to cancel. We don't need to do that. We just want, we just want the browser control. Because you can set it on a static page. Like if you want to, if you want the user to start browsing on your home page or on a particular page that you've set up on your server, then you can do that. But we're going to control these things ourselves. All right. So open up the properties. Now I don't like the name Web Browser 34. You can just make it Web Browser, or I'm going to make this just WB. It's the W, not, not the channel, or the movie people, or whatever. No. <laughs> 
Because um, in my VBA code, which I'm going to be doing with the extended cut for the members, I don't like always typing out web browser dot stuff, web browser dot this. It's easier just to go WB. And I know what WB means, web browser. All right. Now, drop the control source down, come in here, and pick image location. And close that, close that, save it, open it up, and there I am. There's me. And I'll move to the right. And there's that handsome double. Now you might need to make your browser bigger, right, to fit your pictures. So we'll make it bigger this way. We'll slide this down this way. Make you go this way, like that. All right, make it whatever dimensions you want. Obviously, you're going to want to make sure your pictures on your website are all relatively the same size. If they're not, you can zoom in and out here. For example, watch this. I'll zoom in, and I'll zoom out. I'll go to Kirk. I'll zoom out. I'll zoom back in. And notice as I move from record to record, that zoom ratio stays. So you can set that wherever you want to. Right? You can zoom in some more. You can leave it. You can come back to it, and that zoom stays. Right? There's the zoom level. This I'm going to show in the extended cut for the members. You will learn how to zoom in and out. There is no automatic zoom for the web browser control. Unfortunately, you can't just have it automatically zoom into the dimensions of the picture. I tried. If anyone knows of a way, let me know. Please, I'll make a video out of it and give you credit for it. Uh, but I, I Googled this for like a half an hour. So you can manually zoom in and out and set the picture however you want it and then save that setting in the table. So the next time someone browses there, it'll just zoom to that level that you set. Okay? And I'll also show you how to hide the image if one doesn't exist. All right. But I also promised you guys I'd show you a couple other file types. So here's Picard. And there's the junk.htm. That's just an HTML file. All right. HTM, HTML, ASP files work fine. Um, there's a 599c.gif. That's an animated GIF. That'll display just fine too. That's an, this is an old one. This is when I used to sell CDs. It's how long it's been since I made an animated GIF. <laughs> I used to do banner ads on different websites. And yes, that's where the name comes from. I used to sell CDs with my hour-long lessons on them for $5.99. And that included shipping. That was a pretty good deal. Um, here's a text, images.txt file. Now, here's, here's one thing that'll happen. Okay? If you do have JavaScript on that page, it'll likely generate an error. So you don't want just people just browsing anywhere. And this is another thing that I Googled for like an hour to try and figure out a way to suppress this error message. I couldn't figure it out. So I just figured I'd leave this in here so it would display it for you. But, here, do not create more messages. Say no. All right, but if it does generate, it'll at least go to that page, right, and display whatever. And there's my images page, right? What else we got in here? Uh, yep, same thing. This is a W9 form. This is a PDF file. If you browse to a PDF file, it will try to download the image, which you might want, okay? But generally, you don't, so I'm going to cancel that. And then, of course, if we have no, uh, no image specified, you'll just get the address is not valid, okay? And again, in the Members edition, I'm going to show you how to hide this browser control if there is no image specified. So here's the member database again. If I go to a record that doesn't have a picture, it just hides that. And you can hide all these controls too. We just use the visible property, but I'll cover that in the extended cut. So once again, check out the extended cut for the members. Only silver members and up. Remember, you get access to all of my extended cut videos. There's almost like 300 and some of them right now. So there's a lot of them. Lots and lots of stuff to watch for a very, very low monthly fee. I know. Hey, I got puppies to feed. So join, join my, my YouTube channel. <laughs> And gold members, don't forget, you can download these databases off my website as well. Plus, you get extra free classes every month. There's lots of benefits to joining. You can find out more on my website. Or just click that blue join button, whether you're on YouTube or my website. doesn't matter. Give it a click. So that's it for your tech help today. I hope you learned something, and we'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links.
You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1, and it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.